the Queen's Gambit declined is d4, d5, c4, e6. In this opening, there are three issues that Black needs to think about. Number one, he needs to get his king side developed quickly so he can castle on that side of the board. Number two, he needs to address his problem bishop on c8, which is behind his pawn chain in the center. And number three, he would like to push his c pawn to c5 at some point to counterattack Black's center at d4. Okay, play might continue knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, bishop e7, and this is the usual way that black develops his king side before castling. Now white plays the move bishop to g5 in this position so that he can play e3 next and his bishop will be outside of his central pawn chain. There's another strategic reason for playing bishop to g5. It actually dissuades black from pushing his pawn to c5. Instead, black typically castles in this position, but let's take a look at the move c5. After c5, white can play d takes c5. And because the bishop is on g5, it's pressuring one of the defenders of black's d5 pawn which is under attack three times here. Also, if black recaptures on c5, then his f6 knight is pinned. And this is not a good position for black. Okay. So instead, black will castle, and then white will play e3 to develop his other bishop, which now notice is also protecting his c4 pawn. Okay. From here, black can play h6, bishop h4, and the move knight e4 is called Lasker's defense in the queen's gambit declined. So what's the point of this move? Well, black wants to trade as many pieces as possible. He wants to trade a pair of bishops and a pair of knights. If he trades off pieces, then his slightly cramped position won't make much of a difference. If you have less space than your opponent, then you would like to trade pieces so your pieces are not tripping over each other. But there's a downside to this move, a couple of downsides. One, you moved your knight twice in the opening, which gives white an extra move for development. And two, you're encouraging the trade of dark squared bishops. But black's dark squared bishop would be called his good bishop because his central pawns are on the opposite color from that bishop. And white's bishop on h4 was his bad bishop because it's on the same color as white's central pawns. So black trades off his good bishop for white's bad bishop. Black willingly goes into this line in order to relieve the pressure on his position, trade pieces, and facilitate the move c5 and get his problem bishop into the game. And this is known as Lasker's defense. Okay. There are a few moves white can make in this position. A strong move here is rook to c1. But I want to point out what happens if white takes the knight on e4. Okay. I always dismissed Lasker's defense because of this move. Um, I didn't want to play this as black and end up with doubled pawns. Okay. From here, white can play knight to d2 to attack that pawn, but black is perfectly fine after the move f5, and this is a solid pawn chain here. But he can do even better, in my opinion, by playing e5, freeing his light squared bishop, his problem bishop. And white cannot win a pawn in this position. If he tries, then black has the move e takes d4, winning the pawn back and simultaneously attacking the e4 knight. White cannot save the knight and regain his one pawn with queen takes d4 because of the move rook to d8, 
and the queen is forced to leave protection of the knight, which will be lost. Okay. So white does not normally want to trade here and take on e4. So a very good move in this position is rook to c1. Several reasons why this is a good move. Number one, white reasons that the c4 and d5 pawns will be traded soon and his rook will be posted on a half open file. So it's a natural place for the rook. But number two, the move rook to c1 again dissuades black from playing the move c5. Instead, black typically plays c6, but let's look at what happens with the move c5. After c5, white exploits the fact that the d5 pawn is weakened. Okay, it's attacked twice, so he takes. If black takes back, then white wins a pawn. So black can try to remove the defender first, and then rook takes c3, and then get the pawn back, but then he loses the c5 pawn. Okay. So the move c5 actually loses a pawn in this position. And the third thing that rook to c1 accomplishes is it stops black from playing knight to d7, a natural developing move, Rather than knight to c6, black wants to keep his c pawn mobile. And the reason you can't play knight to d7 in this position is because, again, white captures on d5, and black can't recapture without losing that pawn. So he has to try to remove this defender first, but then after rook takes c3 and recapturing on d5, white wins the c pawn again, this time on c7, because the knight has interfered with the queen's defense. So rook to c1 is a multi-purpose move in this position. And black should play c6, because that allows the move knight to d7 to occur next, because there's no longer a weak pawn sitting on d7 to be captured. And the pawn on c6 also supports the d5 pawn in this position. Okay, we'll play just one more move here for white, bishop to d3. So white does need to develop that bishop at this point, and he attacks the knight on e4, which is not adequately defended. So he has to move it now. He can't defend with f5. He will take the knight on c3. If he tries to defend with f5, then the move knight to e5 is very strong for white, which notice hits the, the sensitive square here on g6, which would fork these heavy pieces. So he's forced to capture here on c3, and white should recapture with the rook to keep his half open c file after these pawns get traded. And now we'll stop and I'll mention just a couple of things that black needs to think about in this position. He still needs to address his problem bishop. So at some point he needs to make the pawn break either e5 or c5 okay, in order to get his bishop out. Sometimes he plays c5 and b6 and fianchettos the bishop. Sometimes he plays e5 and gets the bishop out on this diagonal. Whichever one of those moves he desires to play, he'll usually preface it with the move d takes c4, which looks strange at first. It looks like black is giving up the center, giving up this e4 square, which he fought so hard to control early on in the opening. But it's a necessity because that pawn on d5 will become weak once one of these pawns moves forward. And he doesn't want to commit himself to defending the d5 pawn, which sometimes becomes an isolated pawn. So he gives it up. Okay, and then white will recapture. Okay, and then there's several plans here. Uh, knight d7 can come next. One of these pawns can be pushed in the near future. 
and black will continue to strive for equality. Okay, thank you for watching the video.